I just read about a woman who has a 10-step facial routine every morning, followed by a delicious practice of hatha yoga and slow steam in her bathroom. She also does something called uh, light therapy. She has some kind of fancy machine that she steps into with these special categories of light and an absence of sound. Then she listens to her uplifting self-help tapes, which say, go girl, you can do it. She launches herself into her hot couture and jets off to the day, slaying dragons because she can. Her whole routine takes about 50 minutes, 5-0. It takes me 50 minutes, 5 just to get out of bed, which includes me rolling around in the crackers in my sheets because I have to keep them there for my medications, taking seven pills, lurching back and forth violently, finally, through inertia, launching myself upright out of my bed, having excruciating pain in my lower back, which is a fracture in my tailbone and pelvis and dystonia, which is an involuntary muscle contraction, along with sciatica. It's a lovely cocktail. Parkinson's is mean. I go down on my knees. I fall a lot. So getting to the bathroom is an epic journey, especially when you have urgency in the morning, like you got to go now. So I realize there's another 20 steps to get to my bathroom. I pull myself up along these rocks, which are actually these rocks in the wall, which are actually pulleys for my drawers in my bathroom. Some of them come loose. Anyway, I pull myself up on the counter along the wall through a system of miraculous moves and 180 degree turns on the bar that I had installed. I could pull myself up onto the area of the bathroom and like a tightrope walker, I go from wall to wall until I can finally reach the other grab bar and twist around, get the pants down in time to sit on the toilet. If I can do this without anybody getting wet and soiled, that is a good start to the day. So about 25 minutes have passed now. I have to get back out to the kitchen to make some sort of coffee with espresso maker, which I should never have bought. I just need the one button kind of machine. If anybody knows of one that I can do for my phone, like press a button for my bed and have coffee waiting. Hey, let me know. I'm ready. Anyway, I get to the kitchen, do the same thing with the pulley system on the wall, which is actually the drawer pulls. Try to get the refrigerator door open to get some almond milk out. Get coffee grounds everywhere. Spill the coffee at least once. Make another cup. Slowly realize the water tank is empty, or the machine wasn't working, or both. Pull myself up onto the sink again. Crawl along the countertop, which is actually an epic journey of just a few feet. Finally get the coffee in a mug that doesn't spill this time. Thank God they still make these. Oh my gosh, it's leaking just a little bit though. This is still a victory, yes. Get over to the computer where I can pull it up on the books that I have assembled because I have no desk yet. Pull the computer, which is a desktop and kind of heavy, tweak my back, get into the meeting somehow after pressing enough buttons with my shaky hands. Sometimes I go to the wrong meeting accidentally. This happens all the time. Then I forget my camera's on while I am circling like a little dog trying to find a comfortable place. There's no comfortable place to sit. So I sit in an uncomfortable place and I listen to a few meetings and I do some talks and I record some podcasts, I do some writing, finally realizing that my coffee is filled with coffee grounds. I try to take a shower if the meds have kicked in. If they don't, I just put on a beanie and hope for the best, get down to the coffee shop, which is just a block and a half away. I pass my neighbors with a deficit of housing who ask me for change, I don't carry cash. I gotta think of some new jokes, but I carry coupons and I hand these out to my neighbors with a deficit of housing so they can get their own coffee which is something that is awesome. Then I get back inside my, my apartment through another series of miraculous events and I say little prayers as I'm doing it with my walking stick. And I look like the little old lady, you know, lurching myself up the hill, hunched over. Or some days I can walk upright like a semi-normal. I can pass for a semi-normal human being and not the beast that I feel like when I'm in my house crawling around. If I have a bra on and I can get myself dressed, and look basically a-okay. It is a good day, my friends. So at this point, I'm still kind of hurting. I've hit about, I think it's probably 9.30 in the morning by now, maybe even 10, and I've done so many epic journeys that I need many more meds to function. Put on my patch, which is a dopamine agonist 
try to do a little TRX or a little something like maybe some push-ups, pull-ups, just basic stuff. Do a little more stretching, which is not exactly yoga, but sort of. Do some prayer because I'm down on my knees. I might as well pray anyway, right? Hey, it works. <laughs> I'm down there, so, you know. I guess I try to um, get dressed at this point in a, in a manner that is, you know, appropriate to humanity and start my day with a bunch of meetings and listen to calls and call people who need help with something to do with shutting themselves off from humanity with Parkinson's. Isolation is a killer. And I try to create content for the rest of the afternoon. There's also a bunch of doctor's visits, which hopefully can be by Zoom. If they're not, it is a monstrous activity for me. I really have to plan ahead for those because I can no longer drive alone. Anyway, that's my my morning routine. And to anybody who does the 10-step facials and squeezes their own oranges, shut the fuck up. Just kidding. I'm very happy for you. But I'm exhausted even recounting this because that is the truth of what I deal with during the day when I try to get out of bed. The pain never stops. So forgive me if I'm a bit of a curmudgeon. I really do try to be kind and thoughtful and function in a way that is at least gracious and or patient. Working on that. Ouch. Trying to take more pills right now. Where are my glasses so that I can read about these New York Times book lists with people with seven names like Sharon Kine Brown Fisher Swarf has a new book. I can't read her name because I can't find my glasses. In fact, I don't even know that what this book cover looks like. It's a blob of red and blue. Hey, I'll figure it out one of these days. Have a good morning yourself. What's your morning routine?